Obviously, being uh, no, almost November, football season is in full effect, um, especially it's college football season. And so um, many people think of a lot of rivalries to, excuse me, during college football season. Um, probably Alabama versus Auburn is probably one of the biggest ones. And maybe at least if you're here in Kentucky, just maybe you're going to watch the U of L and UK football game, given that we're so close to Lexington at least. And so today I'm going to be talking about one of the lesser known, but maybe extremely publicized um, college football rivalry, rivalries, and that's going to be against the United States Naval Academy and sorry, and the United States Military Academy, which is um, you'll hear me say Annapolis for the Naval Academy or West Point for Army. And so this rivalry dates all the way back to. 1879, or excuse me, uh, 1890. Uh, it started when a West Point cadet by the name of Dennis Mitchie accepted a challenge from the Naval Academy to play football. Uh, at that time, the Naval Academy had a football program and it had started in 1879. But West Point did not have a football team. So just to rise to the occasion, they created a team. And so the first game was played on November 29th, 1890, and it was played on the Plains at West Point. And so this picture right here is taken from the original game in 1890, and the game on the right, or the picture on the right is taken, this is an original, or an updated, modernized picture of what the Plains looks like at West Point currently. Um, and so after that, the game played for almost every year. Um, it became a regular game that Army and Navy would face each other. But there is a total of about 10 times in which the Army-Navy game was never played. And so the first time that, that game was never played was in from 1894 to 1890. Uh, and this was the result of a feud between a Navy Rear Admiral and an and a Army Brigadier General in 1893. Um, after following a Navy win in 1893, these two gentlemen went at it. Um, they had a big dispute over that game, which almost resulted in an old-fashioned duel, um, common to, say, a Henry Clay duel or things that you hear about in history class. And so, as a result, in 1894, um, <coughs> The president had called a cabinet meeting, which resulted in Army and Navy being restricted to home games, and so they were restricted from even playing each other. And as a result, in 1899, Philadelphia was chosen as a neutral field for the Army Navy football game for years. Um, currently, the Army Navy football game is being played at Boston which was played last year and I think the year before that. But uh, Navy was, or Philadelphia was chosen as a neutral field to kind of subsidize some of the uh, rivalry behind the two academies. And so after that, the game wasn't played in 1909. And this was a result of Army canceling it the rest of its season after a cadet by the name, uh, last name Eugene, he was killed in the Harvard uh, Army football game that year. It's crazy to think that somebody would be killed in a football game. But, um, and then the next time it wasn't played was in 1917 and 1918. Uh, obviously, at the heart of these service academies is the mission to make Marines, uh, sailors, and Army officers. And so that shows in 1917, 1918, because at that time the United States was involved in World War I. And so as a result of that, the War Department initially canceled that game. And again, this happened in uh, 1928 and 1929. Uh, the game was canceled again that, those, both of those years. And this was because Army and Navy couldn't really agree on player eligibility. I don't know exactly what that discrepancy was, but I assume it's probably most along the lines of uh, probably something like that. Um, but there was one time in which the game was never, almost never played, and that was in 1942. Again, the United States was at war in World War II, and as a result of that, there was uh, cuts in the War Department. 
So Army and Navy were set to play each other in Philadelphia, but the game was moved to Annapolis, Maryland, where the Naval Academy resides. And so as a result of that, Army couldn't bring its um, student body. So it, during that game, the Naval Academy cadet midshipmen were ordered to root for the other team. The entire student body was split in half, and the upperclassmen were ordered to root for West Point, and the lowerclassmen were ordered to root for Navy. And so uh, that year, Navy won, but it shows um, a little bit of the uh, brotherhood behind these service academies that they're willing to even support each other. And so out of all of this, there's a couple traditions that surround the Army-Navy football game as a whole. And so one of those traditions is kidnapping Bill the Goat. So this picture here is, a, is the live mascot of the Naval Academy's mascot, which is a goat. And so every year, the West Point cadets tr attempt to kidnap Bill the Goat. And so this happened successfully in 1995, 2002, and 2007. Um, as a result of that, Navy has been very secretive about where they hide, where they keep Bill the Goat, and they're very protective of them as well as the, hand, the cadet or the midshipmen handlers. Um, also, another tradition is the march on. Before the beginning of the football game, both student bodies of the United States Naval Academy and West Point march onto the field. You'll see both the brigade midshipmen and the Corps of Cadets march on. And so this is probably one of the only times in college football that you'll ever see something like this. Uh, this leads to the next tradition, which is affectionately called the prisoner exchange. So every year, the Naval Academy and West Point have exchange cadets that go to the opposite school. And so for one time, one time only at the Army-Navy game, they are allowed to go back to their original school. And so during the march, at the end of the march on, this is typically what happened. And so this picture was taken from last year's football game and hashtag repeat is in reference to Army's uh, second win after breaking a 14 year winning streak by Navy in 2016. And so the last tradition is honoring the fallen. So this is affectionately called singing second. At the end of each, the game, both teams sing each school's alma mater, whether it be the Navy Blue and Gold or West Point's uh, alma mater, and they sing that to honor the fallen soldiers, airmen, or soldiers, Marines, and sailors who come before them. And so the term singing second is uh, synonymous to this tradition because the winning team would sing their alma mater in second, more than likely because it's going to be remembered uh, more. So I hope that you guys have learned a little bit about the Army and Navy football game as well as the tra tra traditions as it's coming up in December, probably around December 10th, I think. And so I hope that you guys will enjoy the game this year. And this is the last pick. Remember, go Navy, beat Army. Mm -hmm.